Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the next part of Slime. Let's do our quick recap before we start. So, Ned created a slime monster in his bath by adding all the yucky, yucky stuff that Jemima had been building up over the years. Uh, things like monkey bogeys, um, bat snots and snail wee. And he put it all in his bath to make a trick for his sister, but then he ended up creating Slime, who is a creature who can turn into anything. And he wanted to use Slime for good, so to take, um, to go and pay back all the people who are really nasty on the Isle of Mulch, where he lives. And the first thing he did is when he went to the school and he went and the Mr. Rath, who was the head teacher, who is the head teacher, came out and said, um, that he started shouting and saying, you've got to get that thing and you were expelled, Ned. Um, and so Slime turned into an octopus and picked um, Slime up, picked, sorry, picked Mr. Rath up and started spinning him round by the legs. So let's see what happens next. Okay. So Mr. Rath was spinning round. There we go. Let go now, commanded Ned. The Sloctopus released its grip. And Mr. Rath went flying off through the air. Whiz! Oh! He cried as he zoomed up above the clouds. There was an eerie silence for a moment when it looked as if Mr. Rath might be heading for outer space. A, wh a sound of whistling cut through the quiet. All eyes in the playground searched the sky. There! shouted Ned. What a shame, muttered Mr. Lust, stroking his beard. Remember, Mr. Lust wants to be the headmaster, doesn't he? There was a tiny glow of red light high in the morning sky. As it began to descend, Ned exclaimed, It's Mr. Rat's bottom burning up as he re-enters the atmosphere. Before you complain to me about this, let me inform you, this is science. Apollo 11, so this is Apollo 11 spacecraft returning from the 1969 Mission to the moon, and there is Mr. Rath bottom. <laughs> oh, cried Mr. Rath as he plunged through the sky. Fortunately for the headmaster, he crash landed into the sea. Splash! There was a sound of sizzling as the water put out the blazing fire on Mr. Rath's bottom cheeks. Then the headmaster cried, Oh, I can't swim. Let's not be too hasty, remarked Mr. Lust. Tea and biscuits, anyone? Ned nodded to Slime. They couldn't let the man drown. The Sloctopus reached out one of its arms. It grew longer and longer and longer till it reached all the way into the sea. Then the Sloctopus plucked up the headmaster, who was bobbing in the waves, and deposited him back in the playground. Splat! All the teachers had to stifle their giggles as the sight of the headmaster looking at the sight of the headmaster looking most undignified. Rath was soaking wet, and the seat of his trousers had burned right through. Everyone could see his bright red bottom, still blazing from his descent. It was so red, it looked like a baboon's bottom. All the school children still had their faces pressed up against the classroom windows. Now they were laughing at the headmaster too. No one laughed harder than old man Giles, the 92-year-old pupil whose punishment was being put down a year every year. He had been at Mulch School the longest, 87 years to be precise. Ha 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 ha, old man Giles chortled so hard that his false teeth shot out and hit the window. Plunk. This only made him laugh even more. If Rath were an egg, he would now be scrambled. Goodbye, sir, chirped Ned sarcastically. The Sloctopus transformed into a hot air balloon, a slaloon, and it whisked the boy up from the bench and into the sky. My ruler, bellowed Snap, bellowed Rath. On cue, the slaloon dropped the ruler and it landed on the headmaster's head with a clunk. All the children laughed. Do come back soon and finish him off, please, called out Mr. Lust. Chapter 12, Cold Hearts. As Ned floated across the sky in his hot air balloon made of slime, he looked down on the little island he called home. Not far from the school was Mulcher's toy shop. Envy's Emporium. So remember, this is the toy shop where the two people who own it really dislike children and they don't like children buying anything from their toy shop. 
Very strange toy shop. There, he shouted to Slime. Down we go, replied his friend. <clears throat> the toy shop belonged to twin brothers Edmund and Edmond Envy. The duo dressed identically in matching waistcoats and bow ties. Their hair was too young for their craggy old faces. It was permed tightly and dyed so black it was blue. However, what Edmund and Edmond were most well known for was their nastiness. The pair hated children. Some thought they only ran a toy shop so they could hate children even more. As for the children of Mulch, it was, all, it was the only toy shop on the island, so they had no choice. If they wanted a toy, they had to go to Envy's Emporium. Why did Edmund and Edmond hate children so much? Because they envied them. The twins were bitter that they were old and ruined. Years and years of sniping and snarking and snumping at each other had chilled their hearts. They hated children. Sorry, they hated each other nearly as much as they hated children. Envy's Emporium was no ordinary toy shop. In amongst the cars, dolls and games you would expect to find in any toy shop, the twins had added some of their own personal surprises. An Envy's Emporium snakes and ladders set where there were no ladders, just snakes on every single square. A toy telephone that never ever stops ringing so it drives you bananas. A rocking horse inside, which the twins had placed a hidden motor. It rocks so fast, it hurls the rider off. Whoosh! A baby doll that not only cries real tears, but also does number ones and number twos. Their version of the game Operation, there is no electric buzz, but an electric shock when you touch the sides. The electric shock is so powerful, it will throw you across a room and leave you in dire need of an operation yourself. A 999,999-piece jigsaw. It says million-piece jigsaw on the box, but the terrible twins have removed one piece. You would finally get to the end after a decade and still not be able to complete it. There is also a trike, where they have taken the seat off and replaced it with a fork. So every time you sit down to pedal, you get an outtastic pain in your bottom. These were, these were the perfect toys to bring terror to children. And now Ned was determined to turn the tables on them. Chapter 13, Clockwork Robot. Some time ago, Ned had fallen in love with a very special toy in Envy's Emporium. A toy his mum and dad could never afford to buy him. Ned's parents were humble people and they worked from dawn until dusk just to put food on the table. The toy was a clockwork robot, metal and boxy with lights and whirring noises, just as a clockwork, ro clockwork robot but sure. The boy had seen it as perfect. <clears throat> Ned knew this clockwork robot would be much more than just a toy. It would be a friend. The boy and his robot would have adventures together. They would fly spaceships, battle alien armies, visit distant planets, and still be home in time for tea. As Ned would daydream, Edmund and Edmond would spy him staring through their window and charge out of the shop. Big gun, child, Edmund would shout. Wretched boy, Edmund would agree. I was, o I was only looking, Ned would protest. Stop wearing our precious toys out with your eyes. <clears throat> if you ain't going to purchase said toy, then shoot and never not darken our door again. <clears throat> then the horrid pair would retreat into their shop and slam the door. Bang. The sign on the door read, only one child at a time. Children are vile, thieving rats. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Years and even months and weeks passed. Eventually, Ned had saved up enough of his pocket money to buy the robot for himself. So one Saturday morning, he wheeled himself inside the shop. Dring! went the bell on the door. Strangely, the shop was completely empty. Hello? he called out. Hello? But there was no answer. With trepidation, Ned picked up the clockwork robot from the window and took it over to the till. 
Still, the boy couldn't see anyone. Then, boom! The twins leaped up from behind the counter. Edmund had some joke shop fangs in his mouth and was pulling a vampire face. Meanwhile, Edmund had sharp claws on his fingers and was pulling a werewolf face. The pair loved frightening children. The startled Ned rolled back in his wheelchair. Why did you do that? He sputtered. Happy Halloween! The twins chimed in together. Ned thought for a moment. It's not Halloween for another six months. It's Halloween every day in Envy's Emporium, said Edmund. We don't need a special day to scare children, agreed Edmund. The twins looked down at the clockwork robot the boy was handling, holding in his hands. So you've finally saved up all your precious little pennies, have you? remarked Edmund with a look of pity on his face. Yes, replied the boy. He took out his piggy bank from next to him on his battered old wheelchair. The piggy bank was indeed full of pennies. Ned received just a penny a week of pocket money. It was all his parents could afford. But the boy had saved and saved and saved and then saved some more. The night before, Ned had counted all the pennies and realised to his delight he had just enough to buy the robot. The twins snatched the piggy bank and shook out the coins onto the counter. The old evil pair bristled as they realised they would have to count every single one. There must have been hundreds and hundreds of coins. Then Ned noticed Edmund whispering in Edmund's ear before the pair shared a secret smile. I will go and fetch a bag, heard Edmund. You do that, Edmund, replied Edmund. No, you're Edmund. Am I? asked Edmund. Yes, I am Edmund. Are you sure? Quite sure. I thought it was the other way round. No, definitely not. Oh, said Edmund. The twin was most befuddled. Well, you do that, Edmond. Thank you, Edmond, replied Edmond, before realising his mistake. Duh! You've got me doing it now! The boy looked on in disbelief. The Envy twins were crackers! Edmond tiptoed off as Edmond began counting the coins on, his, on the counter. 1p, 2p, 3p. Ned looked down at the clockwork robot he was cradling in his hands. At last, this fantastic toy, which he had coveted for so many years, was going to be his. 4p, 5p, 6p. Boom! There was a deafening explosion right next to the boy's ear. Horror upon horror. Ned dropped the clockwork robot to the floor. Clank! It smashed into pieces. Clatter! In tears, Ned leaned over in his wheelchair to collect them all up. But it was no use. The robot was destroyed. Still, Edmund counted. 7p, 8p, 9p. Hunched over, the boy could feel someone looming behind him and turned around. It was Edmund. The twin was holding what was left of a brown paper bag that he had burst. Oops, remarked Edmund. Oops, indeed, agreed Edmund. That nasty little runt has broken our toy. All children are vile, especially this little vandal. And all breakages must be paid for in full. But, 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 pleaded Ned, it wasn't my fault. Oh, yes, it was. But you gave me a fright. What fright? Asked Edmund, mock, mock innocently. I didn't hear anything, lied Edmund. I am going, announced Ned. The boy made a grab for all the pennies all spread out on the counter, but Edmund whisked them away just in time. They're mine, pleaded the boy. You didn't listen, snarled Edmund. All breakages must be paid for in full, repeated Edmund. But, but, no buts, boy, now be gone. With a heavy heart, the boy turned his wheelchair and rolled himself out of Envy's Emporium. Oh, that was nasty, wasn't it? Just as Ned reached the door, he turned back to see the evil pair collapse in hoots of laughter. Ah, we got him! We got him good and proper! When all this happened, Ned had felt helpless to do anything. Today, he had the power to right this wrong, and so many others. Chapter 14. The Most Revolting Toys in the World the hot air balloon made of slime landed on the dew-dusted roof of Envy's Emporium. Splat! Tring! The bell chirped as the door to the toy shop opened. 
Sitting on the roof, Ned could see the top of the little girl's head rushing out. The frizzy-haired child was in floods of tears, clutching a headless dolly. She cried as she ran out of the shop. A slate came loose on the roof and fell to the ground. Crunch! The frizzy-haired girl looked up. Ned? Shh! Just Ned. The girl wiped her tears and nodded before running off home. As she disappeared from view, the Envy Twins stepped out of their toy shops. Ah! Ha 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 ha! They laughed. Another satisfied customer, Edmund, chirped one. No, we've been through this a million times, snapped the other. You are Edmund. Am I? Yes. Well, who's odd? Edmond, then. Me. Are you sure? Get inside, Edmund. Who's that? You. With that, the pair scrambled back into their shop. They both tried to go through the door at the same time and became stuck for a moment. Tring! Still holding up on the roof. Still hiding up on the roof, the boy whispered to his friend, When you hear me shout, Slime, I want you to come down the chimney. Slime? A slime, who had gone back into being a blob. Yes, Slime. So, now? No, when I say Slime, you just said it again. I mean when I say it next. What? Slime. Now? No, and keep your voice down. They might hear us, hissed Ned. Listen out for the magic word. There's a magic word as well. Slime was becoming mightily confused. No, no, no. Slime is the magic word. You said it. Next time I say it. Next time you say it. You are really getting annoying, Slime. Now let me down. Slime turned himself into a pole, which the boy slid down to the ground. Then, part of the pole separated off to form a huge motorbike for Ned. A motorbike made of slime. A slimer bike. Tring! With a smug smile, Ned sped into Envy's Emporium. Brum! Once again, the shop appeared to be empty. Hello! called out the boy. Hello! There was silence before. Boo! Edmund and Edmond leapt up from behind their counter. Edmund had a joke arrow through his head and Edmund a joke axe. Oh, what a what an incredible shock, said the boy sarcastically. Ned felt rather cool sitting astride his beast of a bike. The evil pair looked most displeased. We didn't expect to see you back, remarked Edmund. Well, boys, here I am, replied Ned defiantly. What a revolting looking motorbike, said Edmund dismissively. It's a monster, said Ned, as he revved up the engine. Vroom, vroom, vroom. It's funny is what it is, said Edmund. Funny peculiar, not funny ha ha, agreed Edmund. We want it out of our emporium now. And if you're looking for a refund on the robot you smashed to smithereens, it's a no. No, 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 replied Ned. It's not that. I just wondered if you had one particular toy. One particular toy, said Edmund. This is this is Edmund and Edmond's Envy's Emporium, the greatest toy shop on the whole island. The only toy shop on the island, remarked Ned. Still the greatest, said Edmund. What are you looking for, boy? asked Edmund. A bouncy ball that never, ever stops bouncing suggested Edmond, picking one up from behind the counter and hurling it at the floor. Boing, 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 boing. An exploding rubber ducky, perhaps, chimed in his twin brother. Perfect for a deadly bath. He turned the timer on one side, turned the timer on the side, then rushed to the door and threw it out into the road. Kaboom! Thick white liquid splattered all over the windows. Splat, split, splut. The milk float during its early morning round had exploded. When the milk milkman returned to it with his crate, he looked mightily shocked. Maybe a Scrabble set without any vowels, said Edmund, picking up their own version of the classic games. Or consonants? The evil pair chuckled at the thought. But the boy simply shook his head and smiled. Ned was in no rush. 
In fact, he was determined to enjoy this. Um, a giant cuddly tarantula spider, heard Edmund. It bites with real venom, added Edmund. Dwok. A potato gun that fires whole potatoes, maybe, announced Edmund, pulling the trigger. Right, we shall leave it there for today. We will see what other rub quite rubbish toys that the twins are trying to sell and um, sell to Ned. So hope you guys are all okay and still doing well. And um, so I am in school again this afternoon and I will be trying my best to ring all of you to say hello and to see how you are all doing. So let your parents know and um, you can expect a call from me sometime between one and three o'clock. If I don't get a chance to speak to you today, I will be back in school on Monday morning and I will try and give you a call then. But if I do call you before I give you a call this afternoon, try and think if there's anything that you need or want from school and I'll see what we can do. This is your chance while I'm in school to get anything that you might need or want. Maybe it's the next Harry Potter book. Maybe it's some crayons or some felt tips that you want to collect from school. Anything like that we can help you with, okay? So I will try and call you sometime after one o'clock. Okay, guys, so take care. Hope you're all doing really well. Remember to keep on going outside and exercising. It's a nice day today and it's really important to get outside and do some exercise. It does make you feel better. Even if you can't be bothered to do it, when you go out, you will start to feel better. Okay, so take care, everyone, and I will see you again same time here, 10 o'clock. Okay, guys, take care. Bye.